One of the largest resource conventions in the country descends on Thunder Bay, bringing hundreds of exhibitors to the Fort William Gardens. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Central Canada Resource Exposition, also known as CENCAN, has taken over the gardens and the Fort William Curling Club. The conference runs today and tomorrow. Lee Noonan was at the opening ceremonies and joins us now in studio. Lee, what's been happening down at the gardens? Well, Ryan, there were hundreds of exhibitors, some really big machines, a lot of networking opportunities and equipment demonstrations, and they even let me try out a very big drill. There was a line stretching out the doors to get into the Sencan Expo at the Fort William Gardens and Curling Club. Ontario Minister of Mines George Peary made the drive up from Timmins to kick well, uh, things off with his good. comments on the city of Thunder Bay. Their uh, population is increasing. It was declining like the population all across the north was. Those days are over. Those days are over. And it's because of people like Glenn that organizes these events that pulls the people together and says, this is the opportunities that we have in northwestern Ontario. He was joined by newly appointed Associate Minister of Forestry, Kevin Holland. It highlighted to me the synergies that exist between mining and forestry and how we have to be moving those two industries forward together and how they can help support each other and making sure that we're taking full advantage of the natural resources that we have. According to Jamie Taylor, CEO of the Thunder Bay CEDC, the CENCAN conference itself is expected to bring more than $1.2 million into the city over just two days, and the mining sector overall brings approximately $40 million a year into the local economy. We really want to promote ourselves as the hub for Northwestern Ontario, and that's why we're really focusing our efforts on ensuring that we have this mining supply and service um, that all of the mines in Northwestern Ontario are going to need. The Jack Leg Drilling Competition is one of the highlights of the conference every year. They've got dignitaries, they've got pros, and they've got complete novices trying to drill a one-foot hole through this rock. Red Lake Mayor Fred Moda and Atacokan Mayor Rob Ferguson joined Dougal Media's own Ted Jessup in the dignitary right. drilling competition, with Mayor Moda taking first place. All of our mining activity that's happening, our current activity, and our future. So, example, Ken Ross Gold will be opening up. We have West Red Lake Gold. We have Evolution. And to the north of us, with the federal announcement of the Barrens River Bridge, Frontier Lithium to the north. Uh, mining resources is extremely important. For many of the companies at the conference, growing their workforce is a priority. More than 90 are actively hiring there. CENCAN has made event registration free for anyone bringing in resumes or training applications. Lee Noonan, TBT News. A Thunder Bay man initially charged with second-degree murder has pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter. Police were called to the 200 block of Robertson Street on the morning of September 20th, 2023, following reports of a serious assault. The victim, 63-year-old Richard Jung, was found with life-threatening injuries and died in hospital a week later. The suspect, 25-year-old Randy Andrews, was initially charged with aggravated assault before that charge was upgraded to second-degree murder after Jung's death. But Andrews appeared in court earlier this summer and pleaded guilty to the manslaughter charge. He remains in custody with a sentencing hearing scheduled in early October. Thunder Bay police have now laid charges following a two-vehicle crash involving a school bus earlier this week. It happened around 8.15 Monday morning on John Street Road at the corner of Mercier Street. The school bus had 14 students on board when it was struck from behind by a car. Fortunately, nobody had to be taken to hospital, and the students were all transferred to another bus. The 50-year-old male driver of the car has been charged with careless driving. Well, we've heard all about the economic benefits of cruise ships in Thunder Bay, but this isn't the only community in the region to see those benefits of cruise ships on Lake Superior. A French ship is making a number of stops in smaller communities along the North Shore this week. Justin Hardy met the cruise ship Le Champlain in Red Rock this morning and brings us the story. The town of Red Rock received some visitors Tuesday morning as the opponent Le Champlain cruise ship made a stop as part of its Lake Superior tour. The French vessel stopped near Red Rock's marina and ferried tourists ashore. 
Dan Bevlacqua is the executive director of Superior Country, the organization that has been working to attract cruise ships to North Shore communities. He says stops in small towns mean an exciting boost to tourism revenue. Thunder Bay obviously gets the gets the largest economic benefit from the ships. Um, however, just by coming into these small communities, we're able to put things together like guided hikes, uh, indigenous interpretation, and all kinds of different programming that really spreads the economic wealth around. So this is very big for the small communities along the North Shore. They haven't seen any anything like this in years, and, and we're thrilled that Superior Country was able to bring this here. Guests were greeted by Red Rock Mayor Darkeese Robinson and introduced to some of the local First Nations culture before being shuttled to local trails to explore the nature the area has to offer. Robinson says the visit by Le Champlain and a previous stop by a Viking cruise ship have been exceptionally beneficial to the community. She adds that she hopes to see more ships pull up to the town in the future. I sure hope that uh, Superior Country can build on what uh, what they've done so far. Uh, again, they advocate for all these uh, communities along the North Shore, and uh, I just think that you know we're we're going to represent them well here in Red Rock, and that they can bring uh, maybe they can bring one or two more ships in for next year. It's extremely important that we're ready for these cruise ship guests and that we offer the best services available to them. Uh, really, right now, it's it's just about putting our best foot forward and ensuring that they have a great time so that we have repeat clientele in the future. Uh, not only do the cruise ships bring an economic impact right away when they're here, but also the travelers that are on the ships are coming back to the area again um, to really explore it. Once leaving Red Rock, the ship will continue east along Lake Superior, stopping at other North Shore towns like Rossport and Terrace Bay before ultimately returning to Thunder Bay to end its tour. Justin Hardy, TVT News. A beloved fall tradition will soon come to an end. Gammondale Farm has announced that the 30th annual Pumpkin Fest will be the last one. Owners Sue and Jerry Gammond are planning to semi-retire. The news comes as they celebrated the farm's 40th anniversary with a ribbon cutting this morning. This year's Pumpkin Fest is expected to be the biggest one yet and will feature more than 20 attractions, including new activities like pumpkin bowling and a no left turn maze. In celebration of the final year, the community is invited to bring in old photos taken at Gammondale to post on an anniversary memory wall inside the barn. Jerry Gammon says it's bittersweet saying goodbye to the long-standing tradition, but notes that they still plan to operate the farm on a smaller scale and keep the sleigh rides going. We've always done children's birthday parties and a few school tours, and we'd like family reunions. We've done anniversary parties, these kinds of things. We may even be doing some small versions in the fall, uh, birthday parties where we have a fall theme to it. But it'll be by reservation and smaller groups, so it's easier to manage. And we'd like to keep doing it, yeah, as long as we can. We enjoy it. We've always enjoyed uh, hosting the public, and so children can come out and have fun. And uh, if we can do it a little bit longer, we're going to carry on. Pumpkin Fest starts on September 28th on McCluskey Drive and will run for five weekends, including Thanksgiving Monday. Tickets are available now on the Gammondale Farm website and must be purchased before visiting the farm. The group that tracks tornadoes in Canada and the northern U.S. is confirming that two more twisters touched down in the Thunder Bay area during the Labor Day long weekend. This aerial photo from the South Gillies area shows that a large number of trees were flattened on August 31st. Officials with the Northern Tornadoes Project estimate the twister had a maximum wind speed of 145 kilometers per hour when it touched down around 5.15 p.m. that day. The tornado's track was almost 7 kilometers long. The group also confirmed another tornado about five minutes later caused similar damage south of Oliver Lake. A large number of trees were toppled and several structures were damaged along the 14-kilometer track, but no injuries were reported. Now, this third tornado was previously confirmed that day on Marks Lake. The water spout flipped a dock right out of the lake, and that was all caught on video. The Stanley Cup made its rounds in Thunder Bay today. Jamie Compon, an assistant coach with the Florida Panthers, won his third championship in June and decided to bring the trophy home. A private event was held over the lunch hour at the Northwestern Ontario Sports Hall of Fame to allow family and local dignitaries a chance to get pictures with Compon and the Cup. The Thunder Bay native was inducted into the Hall of Fame last year and then went on to win his most recent championship. Compon says he was honoured to be named to the Hall of Fame and expressed his gratitude by visiting with the famous trophy. 
Honestly, this is crazy, but I've never been here. So this is special and I know what Diane and Dave have done for me uh, to get me into this, into the Sports Hall of Fame. And I, I wanted to show how, how much it meant to me by bringing it back here and, and letting people share it here because it's, it is important. It is important to give back. I said to him, now I guess we have to change all those records because it's not two Stanley Cups, it's three. And it was less than nine months that he changed that, that history. But I have a feeling knowing Jamie Compon, it may be uh, a few more. He's a great coach and uh, he's, he's a, he loves the game of hockey. The day of festivities continued later this afternoon with a community event at Port Arthur Stadium. Joel Mendelson was down there and we'll have that story coming up in sports. Yeah, a lot of excitement with uh, people in the city today getting their chance to see the cup and take a picture. And uh, yeah, if, uh, if like Jamie Compon, you haven't been down to the Northwestern yeah. Ontario Sports Hall of Fame, get down there because it is a pretty good time. All right, let's turn our attention to the weather now, Fiona. And it was another day that felt like midsummer once again. Definitely not hockey season. No, not <laughs> Didn't, quite. It felt a little bit weird to be talking about Stanley Cup when we have temperatures as high as 26 and a humidex of 31 yet again. Really, this, this is September 11th. This is not normal. Now, it was mostly cloudy most of the day. Just in the last few hours, things have started to clear out. So this evening is, is looking pretty clear and quite nice. But winds were relatively light most of the day. Started out from the southwest about four kilometers per hour. That's almost completely calm, to be honest. It did kick up to about 15, 16 kilometers per hour and started to come in from the east. So a little bit cooler, uh, more off the lake. And uh, all in all, just a gorgeous midweek. Now, if we take a look at what's happening across the region, there are some clouds that are pushing in from the west. We've got mostly cloudy skies in both Fort Francis and up into Red Lake and into Pickle Lake and Sioux Lookout and Dryden. But temperature-wise, uh, they're all pretty close to their highs for the day, but the Humidex, once again, making things feel quite a bit warmer. The Humidex is hovering around 28 at this time in Fort Francis, up into Red Lake, little cooler, but the Humidex is still managing about 25, 26. As you head further eastward, lots of sunshine in the Greenstone region and into Armstrong. Just a gorgeous day and sitting around 25 in that area, but it is actually showing a Humidex of 30 at this hour. Then along the eastern shores, just a touch cooler. And the Humidex just slightly cooler, but they do have more cloud cover on this side of Lake Superior. So all in all, pretty consistent through most of the region now. Here in the city of Thunder Bay tonight, it's going to drop down to 12 Celsius. So once again, uh, several degrees above normal. We should see lows in the high single digits, 8, 9 Celsius or so. So we're still quite mild, definitely uh, Temperatures, you want to keep the windows open at night with just a few clouds, but winds will stay mild. And it's really looking like uh, these warm temperatures are going to continue as predicted for the rest of the work week. The weekend should be a little cooler, but Thursday and Friday looking to be pretty consistent with what we've seen. Okay, well, we will enjoy it while it sticks around. Thanks Absolutely. a lot, Fiona. Well, we talk about the temperatures here. The political race in the U.S. continues to heat up. It's really a roaring, a roaring boil now, you could say, as the first debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump went last night. Plenty of reaction today, as you can imagine. We'll bring all of that to you when your news hour continues right after the break. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. 